if we don't necessarily know it ourselves, we tap into other expressions of our soul and over soul. You said that we need to raise our vibration to visit your world. So if we were to visit without raising our vibration, would we see an empty planet with no people on it? Or would we see no planet at all? Well, you can't actually come to our planet without raising your vibration. It is not possible. The technology required to travel to our world requires you to be able to shift yourselves dimensionally. Therefore, without this technology, you cannot access our world. We could impart that to you when you are ready. Do you have accidents in your world? Are there dangers, for example, from creatures, environment, or activities that might cause death or injury? These things on occasion happen, but generally we know about them ahead of time and we prevent much of the loss from happening because we are very psychically attuned to our world. But of course, certain things happen, and often these are known to take place as soul agreements for very specific purposes. In general, we don't have as many accidents as your world has. We've also developed technologies that can help prevent things like earthquakes and have more indestructible buildings than the path and what you know in your, your world. Uh, what are your buildings made of and how do they look? Are they tall? Are any underground? Are they in streets, cities, or in countryside? Tell us about your buildings. There are many. We have settlement in natural settings. We live in harmony with our world. We have both underground cities and tunnels where there is some different sorts of creation taking place and this allows us to not harm the world as much that we live upon to create massive sorts of places. There are many both festivity and spiritual initiation that are done in the underground part of our world. Though most of our time is spent on the above ground part of our world. And here we have very many settlements that spread across our world. We live only within about one third of our world and leave the other two thirds of the land for the other animals and other species that share our planet with us. We also spend a lot of our time in our ship. We tend to build large dome shaped structures, pyramids, cones, and buildings with different shapes. And the shape signifies the purpose of the building based upon geometric structures that allow for certain sorts of energies to be conducted in that particular space. We also have some temporary retreat spaces, like cities of tree houses in some of the more secluded parts of our world, and floating islands on some remote parts of the ocean. These are places where people go for deep introspection in nature in a way that takes them deeper into their connection with the earth than is possible in our civilization. Do you have windows or balconies in your buildings? Yes, 
most of our buildings are very transparent, but certain buildings for certain more mm, secretive or personal purposes do not have windows that face in mm, one direction at least. Some have no windows at all. Our own buildings often have decorative features that vary by the era and by the country or the er the region. So do you have such decorative features on your buildings? We have symbols from our past that we hold and carry in our cultures to help us remember. Though buildings are very often upgraded and transformed into something new, we do leave some historic places as they are, even within our new growth. But mostly we are focused on doing what is most practical and helpful for the betterment of all and the planet. Do you style or cut your hair or beards? Some of us do, some of us do not. Though, also there are ways that we can change our appearance at will to present different forms, so we don't necessarily have to always cut and regrow hair to present ourselves in a particular way. We don't have just one form, though we've come to be recognized in particular ways in your world. And oftentimes these images that you cast are reflections of how you imagine us to be at, based upon your own sense of who you are. And so we want everyone to know that there are all sorts of different appearances of every different extraterrestrial species in the same way that your world has many different races. There are some things that we can say are general distinctions, like our taller nature, our more slender nature, the more radiant energy field that we emanate because of the dimension that we vibrate within. Though, yes, we can both be taking on many different forms and changing that form at our own will at different times for different purposes. Uh, what fabrics do you use and how are they made? We use many sorts of different fabrics and there are other sorts of combinations we've developed through combining different plants and other resources to create very soft, flowing garment for hot climates. And we create powerful forms of heat protecting insulation when we go to other sorts of places. There are different types of gear that we wear when we go into ships or onto different sorts of planets and also we adapt to the other places that we visit as is customary to adapt to the culture and the climate of planet travel and this also feeds back into our culture and creates a planet that has some diversity of beings from different systems that sometimes come as visitors to our world in the same way that we go as visitors to other worlds. How is your clothing sewn together or formed into curved shapes? It isn't ultimately that different than your sewing method, but we have more advanced ways of doing that with different sorts of machines to create that fabric. Do you wear shoes? How are they made? And can you mention about styles? Sometimes we wear shoes. Sometimes we do not. 
there are many different types of shoes in the vast universe and our many timelines and uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands, millions of years of existence in the moment of contact with the channel. Yes, our in our world, we have nonetheless different types of shoes, all with for different purposes, similar to your world. We will say, though, that there are specific types of shoes that we have for exploring the water and gear that we have to take on a similar activity like scuba diving, but where we can immerse ourselves in the water for much longer periods of time. And we've learned this over time through our connection with the Syrian beings who exist in the water element and hold that frequency. And we learn to grow in connection with them through experiencing some of their weight. And they helped us formulate very specific shoes that can help us shapeshift to become more aquatic for periods of time, though that is not ultimately our nature. Well, thank you very much. I think we're complete. And I wish you a very best moment of your time. On the spaceship of Babel, we are gliding through the stars on a five year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars, a celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you will hear us coming as we whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here. Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark. I am lying.